Hey there YouTube, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make an NPC enemy that chases you. So guys, I want to be honest, I didn't have my morning coffee today, so I'm pretty tired. So if I'm a little quiet today, that's why. But by the end of this tutorial, you will have an NPC that will chase you. Eventually we'll also make it so that it will damage you and have animations, but this is what today's tutorial will leave us with. Hope you guys like the tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is add a dummy to the workspace. So I'm going to go into my view tab, get a toolbox, and I'm going to search up R15. I already put it in there. And when you search it, one of the first things that pop up should be R15 dummy by a verified creator ID. I'm going to add that, click that, and it's going to automatically add that to the workspace. So here's our dummy that's going to chase us. Um, let's see. I'm going to put him over here. And to make him chase us for this part of the tutorial, we're going to add a script inside the humanoid. So I'm going to click humanoid, right click, and insert object script. Let's call this uh, enemy controller. One thing I want to note is that I am going to click on the dummy a model and I'm going to look at its primary part and I am going to select it and then choose the humanoid root part because I'm not sure why it's not set automatically but I want the primary part of the dummy to be the humanoid root part. I'm going to go back into the script we created and I'm going to delete what, what's in there automatically. And I'm going to create some variables. So the first one is humanoid. And that's just going to be equal to script.parent because our script is within the humanoid. Next, what we should do is uh, get the root. So local root humanoid root part. And that should be equal to humanoid.parent.primary part. And... I'm going to add some uh, variables at the, t at, at the top, and they're going to be our services. So the first service we want is run service. So I'm going to call it run service with capitals. I always capitalize services. And to get the service, we just do game, get service, and then quotation marks, run service. Run service will help us uh, run code every physics frame. And another service called players. This will help us get the players in the game. And now it's time to create the loop that runs, well, create the code that runs every physics frame. Um, because what we're going to do to have the enemy chase the player, uh, we're going to have the dummy every physics frame calculate who is the closest player calculate how far away they are and calculate the direction they need to go in order to go to the player they're targeting so let's create something that runs every physics frame to do that we're just going to do run service dot heartbeat run service has an event called heartbeat that is fired every physics frame or after the end of every physics frame so we're just going to connect a function to it, and we're going to make this a make this an anonymous function, meaning it's inside the function without a name. And so whatever we put into this code block here will run every physics frame. Uh, this is where we need to determine the closest player. So I am actually going to go outside of the heartbeat function, and I'm going to create a new function, just a normal function called uh, find nearest player. This function is going to help us find the nearest player relative to the enemy. So the first thing we need to do is we need to loop through all of the players that are in the game. So first we need to get the players. Uh, player list. Oops. Player list equals players get players. Now we're going to loop through them. So for player 
in pairs player list do so i put a underscore here um usually people would put an i and that's just the index number but since we don't or we're not going to use it i always just put a um, underscore to signify that it's not going to be used in this block of code uh, you can put i if you want it doesn't affect anything so this loop will loop through all of the players that are in the game and now we're just going to try to find the player that is closest to this enemy so i'm going to create some additional variables above this for loop and it's just going to hold the info of who is the closest player so uh, our nearest player and at first it's going to be nil uh, distance and direction so this is going to be variables that are going to hold all this information and so at first there's no one is considered the nearest player so the first thing we should do is check to see if there is anyone set as the nearest player and if they aren't if there isn't any player that is set as the nearest player whatever player we're on will just automatically be set to the nearest player so we'll do an if statement if not nearest player then so code inside here will only run if this is equal to nil or false and since it's nil it will run the first loop through so i'm going to set that so nearest player is equal to player and this is where things get a little bit harder um, calculating the distance and the direction the distance is going to be equal to uh, well first we need to get the um, character or the player's root so uh, what we can do is local check distance I'm just gonna or check vector distance vector I'm trying to think of the best name for this distance vector equals player dot character dot humanoid root part or could just do primary part but I'm going to do humanoid root part dot position minus root dot position and I'm just gonna I don't know why you don't need to put these um, curly braces in there but or curly yeah I am just going to put that in there so this is the distance vector um, if we wanted the distance we would just do distance vector dot magnitude if we wanted the direction we would just do distance vector dot unit so that's exactly what we're going to do uh, distance equals distance vector dot magnitude direction equals distance vector dot unit and so now we're setting the nearest player distance and direction and now what if there is already a player set as the nearest player as we're looping through and we need to check if the player we're looping through is actually closer than the one that is currently set as the nearest player and replace them if need be we're going to add another to do that we're going to add another um, if statement well it's going to be an else an else statement well else if uh, and we're going to take that distance vector else if distance vector dot magnitude is less than distance then so now this code will only run if this player that we're looping through is closer than the one that's set in nearest player then we're just going to take this code and do it again because it's going to replace um, the player if they're closer and so then after this loops through and finishes looping through we should have the nearest player distance and direction located in these variables and we're just going to return them so return nearest player 
distance direction. So we're going to return this as a tuple. And now we're going to use this function um, inside the heartbeat. So I'm going to minimize that because we don't need to edit it right now. And first we're going to locate the closest player, so our nearest player. And we're just going to call our function that we created. Uh, oh, I forgot to, we need to also add the other um, variable names. So nearest player, then we have uh, distance and then direction because we're returning a tuple. So we need to create a tuple um, to receive all those values that our function is returning. And now we get our nearest player distance and direction. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to determine if the enemy is going to chase this player. And you can add some settings to the uh, enemy to do this. So I'm going to add some variables to the top called target distance. And this is going to be equal to the distance that the player must be in order for the enemy to chase you because I don't want the enemy to just always chase the closest player. I want that player to be a certain distance in order for the enemy to want to chase um, the player. So you'll see more of what I mean in a second. I'm going to set this to 20. And I also want to stop distance because I don't want the enemy to like run into the player and keep on running into the player once it got to the player. So I am actually going to set this to five for right now. We can always change this later. So now we've got our target distance or stop distance, and that should be good for right now. So I'm going to go into the heartbeat function once more. And I am going to check if the distance that we received from our function is uh, less than the target distance. So if distance is less than target distance or equal to less than or equal to, then we're going to chase them. And to chase them, we need the direction, which we have. Oh, I also want to um, add something. So you have to be closer than the target distance, but you also have to be farther away than the stop distance. So that means um, the, the enemy will stop like running towards you once they're five studs away. And five studs is actually not that far away. It will still look like they're right by us. So this is fine. And... Now we just need to run the code to actually chase the player that it's targeting. And to do that, we're just going to go into its humanoid that we have as a variable at the top. And we're going to use a function called move. In this case, the move is the better way to go because we do have the direction vector and we're going or the direction and we're also going to be updating this every physics frame. So this is perfectly fine. And we're going to use an else because what if the humanoid or the enemy is not in this um, range of distance? Well, then we want the humanoid to stop. So we're gonna call move again, but we're just gonna do vector three dot new. And this is going to create a vector with zero, zero, zero within it. And we'll make the move vector magnitude be zero. So the humanoid will stop moving. If we don't call this, the humanoid will still move whatever the last direction input was given to it. So it will just keep on moving forever, which is bad. So now I think this is a time where we should go test the script. So I'm gonna press play and oh no, we have errors. Um, probably should figure what that is doing. Um, it looks like it's just nil, nil values and it can't, it doesn't know what to do with it. And I think I know why. So let's go back into the script. It doesn't look like it broke things because it stopped having the errors eventually. And I believe that's because what was nil was our character. Um, the character didn't exist yet. So when it tried to find the nearest player, it didn't find anyone and it just returned nil. And we don't know what to do with nil yet. Um, so it just started erring. But then once my character loaded in, it stopped. Um, so let's look into here. 
and see if there's anything in here that we need to fix. Ah, so right here, uh, we access player.character, but it might not exist yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable inside the for loop called character, and it's going to equal to player.character. And now I am just going to do an if character then and then copy all the code below it cut it and i'm just going to paste it into this if character so now this code will only run if the character exists and so this still might return nil but it won't error inside here so now we have to deal with a nil value in our heartbeat so now all we have to do is do if nearest player then and then cut all of the code that's below it and paste it into this if statement. So now we have a heartbeat function that only runs really if there is a nearest player. And I think that should solve the issues we were having with nil value exceptions. Um, so I think we can try this code out again. I'll link this script in the description that you can download from the Roblox website if you um, had a hard time following that little fix I was doing, but I was just basically adding an if statement and putting all the code inside it. So I'm going to press play now and let's uh, test this. So the dummy's over there. And once I get 20 studs, it will start chasing me and it looks a little bit glitchy. And that's just because I'm on a local server and sometimes it has a hard time loading some things, but it looks like it's pretty smooth now. Um, yeah, so it is chasing me, but it's not. I can't get away from it because its walk speed is exactly the same speed as mine. That's an issue if you want to be able to get away from the enemy. Um, one thing you can do is go into the humanoid of the enemy um, here, and you can just go to its walk speed, and I'm going to turn it to 12. So this way we can actually test to see if you can actually get a certain distance away and it will stop chasing you. So I'm gonna get 20 studs close to it and look how it stops a little bit in front of me. That's the stop distance. If you want him to stop a little bit farther away, you would just increase that stop distance. Right now it's at five. If you want him to get a little bit closer, you would just decrease that value. And the point in which he stops chasing me is the target distance. So if you wanted the dummy or the enemy to chase you even, like, you could be farther away and it would still chase you, you would just increase that target distance. And if you wanted it to chase you forever, you would just make it as big as you want, or you just don't check for that value at all in the if statement. So YouTube, this is part one to the tutorial, teaching you how to have an NPC uh, chase you. Um, the next part will be teaching you how it can damage you when it gets close enough to you. So stay tuned for that one. Um, thanks for watching. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps this channel out. Um, if you have any friends, uh, let them know I exist. Not many people do. Um, I'll see you in the guys in the next video. Thanks.